Welcome to the next part of the module on services and local interprocess communication mechanisms, which focuses on the mechanisms and frameworks provided by Android to enable communication between activities and services. In this part, we'll discuss how activities can communicate to services, as well as how services can reply back to activities that initiate communication with them. In addition to describing these mechanisms, We'll also outline common patterns Android uses to implement frameworks that support activity and service communication. Before covering these communication mechanisms and frameworks, we'll first delve deeper into the deployment model of started and bound services, which can be configured to run in the same process or in different processes than their clients, based on the process element setting in an Android manifest XML file, as shown here. By default, services run in the same process as other components in an application. To deploy a service in a separate process, the process element must be added to the Android manifest file. Although running activities and services in the same process is the most common deployment model for Android applications, there are several reasons for running a service in its own process, as discussed here. For example, a service must run in its own process if it's shared by multiple applications which is why the Android Bluetooth service runs in a separate process, as shown at this path name. Likewise, if a service running in its own process memory address space fails or hangs, the applications that use it may be more robust, assuming they're programmed defensively, of course. Moreover, if garbage collection occurs in the virtual machine of a service running in its own process, that won't affect other parts of the application running in other processes, which may make the application more responsive. When a service runs in a different process than the activity, then they need some form of interprocess communication mechanism to exchange data. Android implements these IPC mechanisms using the binder framework covered here, which supports two-way or one-way client-service communication models that could be programmed via interfaces generated from stubs by the Android Interface Definition Language Compiler, or via messages passed using messenger objects. Depending on the type of communication mechanism used by activities and services, some modifications to application code may be needed to exchange objects and data correctly across processes, as we'll show throughout this module. Android provides several mechanisms that activities can use to initiate communication with services. Selecting the right mechanism depends on various factors such as whether the service is started or bound, whether a message-oriented or method-oriented programming model is desired, etc. A simple way an activity can communicate to a started service is by passing an intent command to the start service method, as shown in earlier videos. Parameters can be added as extras to the intent and then extracted by the started service and used to guide its subsequent processing. Two different mechanisms can be used to communicate with bound services after first connecting to them by calling bind service and receiving a binder object from the service's onbind hook methods, as shown in an earlier video. The first of these communication mechanisms involves message passing by calling send on a reference to an Android messenger that's covered here. A messenger is a generalization of the hammer framework discussed here that encapsulates a reference to a handler implemented within a service. An activity uses this reference to pass messages to the service's handler, even if it's configured to run in a different process, as shown in an upcoming video. The other mechanism for communicating with bound services involves invoking methods on stubs generated by the Android Interface Definition Language Compiler that's shown here. These AIDL method calls can be programmed to implement various behaviors, such as two-way synchronous request-response interactions, two-way asynchronous request-response interactions, or purely one-way method calls, as shown in an upcoming video. Android also provides several mechanisms that services can use to reply back to activities that initiate communication with them. The activity initiating the communication typically dictates the reply mechanism based on information it passes to the service. A simple way to communicate from a service back to an activity involves the messenger mechanism, covered here and discussed earlier in this video in the context of activity to service communication. When used for service to activity communication, 
The activity creates a messenger that encapsulates a reference to a handler implemented within the activity and then gives the service a reference to the messenger via the appropriate means, such as adding it as an extra to the intent command passed to the start service method. The service then extracts the reference to this messenger and uses it to send a reply back to the activity, which is delivered to the activity's reply handler via its handle message hook method, as shown in an upcoming video. Another common service to activity communication mechanism involves the use of callback objects based on the Android Interface Definition Language, or AIDL, which can be passed from the activity to the service via a one-way AIDL method call, as covered here. In this approach, the service simply invokes the appropriate one-way AIDL method on the callback object to return its reply back to the activity, as shown in an upcoming video. A variant of this approach uses a two-way AIDL method called from the activity on the service, which implicitly returns a reply from the service back to the activity when the upcall from the stub to the two-way method implementation is done. Although two-way method calls seem convenient to program, they're actually rather problematic since they execute synchronously, which can block the activity and trigger the dreaded application not responding exception. Android's frameworks and applications of these frameworks are designed, implemented, and integrated in accordance with many POSA and Gang of Four patterns. We summarized key patterns used in its concurrency frameworks in an earlier video. We now summarize key patterns used in its communication and service frameworks, focusing first on a pattern Android uses to launch both started or bound services on demand. In particular, the activator pattern automates the scalable on-demand activation and deactivation of service execution contexts to run services accessed by multiple clients without consuming resources unnecessarily, as shown here. Android's Activity Manager service applies this pattern to launch started and bound services in response to clients that invoke the start service and bind service methods, respectively. In addition to launching services, the Activity Manager service also applies the activator pattern to launch other Android components, such as activities and broadcast receivers, on demand, as shown in the code at this path name. Android applies a set of patterns that guide the design of its mechanisms for passing messages between activities and started services. In particular, the command processor pattern packages a piece of application functionality, as well as its parameterization in an object, to execute it in another context, such as a later point in time, in a different process, or in a different thread, as covered here. Android applies this pattern in its intent service framework which processes asynchronous commands expressed as intents in a background thread so they don't block the main thread, as shown in this earlier video. The active object pattern defines the units of concurrency on a component to be requests for service. These service requests are processed in a different thread than the client thread that invoked the requests, as covered here. Android applies this pattern via its messenger mechanism, which generalizes the hammer framework's send message and handle message methods to communicate between activities and services, even across process boundaries, as shown in this upcoming video. When these message passing mechanisms are used to communicate between activities and services running in different processes, they're implemented internally using Android's binder framework. Android applies the command processor and active object patterns discussed in the previous segment to guide the design of its mechanisms that pass messages between activities and started services. It applies a different set of mechanisms and patterns to enable communication between activities and bound services. In particular, the broker pattern connects clients with objects in a separate process by mediating invocations from clients to these objects while encapsulating the details of the underlying inter-process communication mechanisms as covered here. Android applies this pattern to support method calls between activities and bound services running in the same or in different processes, as shown in this upcoming video. Broker is actually a pattern language that applies many other Gang of Four and POSA patterns. One pattern in the broker pattern language is the proxy pattern, which provides a surrogate or placeholder 
for another object to control access to it is covered here. Android's binder framework uses this pattern to guide the implementation of the stub code generated by the Android Interface Definition Language compiler. When parameters are passed from an activity to a service and back across process boundaries, these stubs automate marshalling and demarshalling, which decomposes parameter objects passed to the methods into primitive data that the operating system can understand, and then recomposes the data into objects on the receiver, as discussed at this link and shown in an upcoming video. We explore these patterns and their application to Android in more detail in a later section of this MOOC. In summary, Android provides a range of mechanisms that enable activities and services to communicate within the same process or across different processes. This part of the module summarized mechanisms for passing intent commands and messages between activities and services, as well as invoking method calls synchronously or asynchronously between activities and services using the Android interface definition language. When activities and services reside in different processes, these mechanisms use the Android binder framework to communicate efficiently. These communication mechanisms also apply various gang of four and POSA patterns. For example, programs based on the intent service apply the command processor pattern. Programs based on messengers apply the active object pattern. And programs based on the Android interface definition language apply the broker pattern. Passing intent commands via start service or bind service is an easy way to communicate from an activity to a service. Though this approach is limited, since it doesn't enable the service to pass an intent reply back to the activity. When such two-way communication between activities and services is needed, Android messengers are easy to use for simple interactions, since there's no need to define a separate Android interface definition language interface, extend stubs, and override hook methods. Messengers are often used to send replies to a started service back to an activity that initiated it. However, messengers are harder to use when applications perform more sophisticated communication interactions involving complex data types, especially when messages cross process boundaries. In these cases, invoking methods via the stubs generated by the Android Interface Definition Language compiler is often more efficient and effective since these generated stubs automatically perform marshalling and demarshalling and shield application programmers from tedious and error-prone details of passing messages across process boundaries. However, the explicit use of the Android Interface Definition Language caused services to process message calls concurrently in a pool of threads, so objects referenced by these threads must be protected from race conditions by the appropriate synchronizers. In contrast, messengers don't require any particular concurrency model. 